too long to go now. And I'm going to really, really miss you. I don't know where to begin to describe how upsetting that was for Janet and I to see the man who had planned and carried out mass murder and killed David to see him as a family man when he was preventing us from being family men. It was just hugely, hugely upsetting and really, really, really hard. Really hard. These next few months were really special with you learning to walk and things. How fortunate he is to be able to say goodbye to his daughter. <coughs> I could not measure up this person that seemed to be loving and compassionate. This person on the video looked ordinary, normal, trustworthy, um, decent. And that, that filled me with a, a fear. When I was watching the video, I thought, if only I could have stopped them at that moment and talked to them and tried to talk them out of what they were do, doing or showing them something that, that, that would make them change their course. That particular morning was David's first trip to London. He was just 22, but he'd never travelled on the underground and I'm a regular traveller on the underground. And he asked me what to do. And I told him he was only going three stops. Um, the, tr the train always stopped at every stop. When the doors opened, take two or three paces forward, took yourself in out of everybody's way, and when the doors opened for the third time, get off. And what we now know is that uh, he did exactly as I just said, but he stood directly opposite, three or four feet away, from Mohammed Siddiqui Khan. I could almost feel that impact and the, a, a total bleakness. All the time in the corner of the video, the footage, is a clock ticking away. And so there's that moment when I was thinking, as I dare say many others were, you know, Jenny now has an hour left to live. Jenny now has 40 minutes left to live. And that's... That was a very distressing thought. When I came to, I didn't really know where I was at first. It was um, it was it was dark. There was all twisted metal everywhere, and um, uh, a few dead bodies everywhere. When I looked around, it was it was just complete devastation, like like a scene out of a war film. The intelligence community had huge amounts of pre-attack information and I believe that uh, an inquest where as an interested party I can ask questions and the coroner can, can compel people to come and give evidence is the only way that we can actually get to the root cause of this. So we've got to have a full independent inquiry to find out what's going on, what went wrong because that's the only way we can then get it right. It would be nice to know exactly what happened on that day because it's, it's been all, over, all up in the air for such a long time. Why? That's what I'd like to know, is why.